Atheists have long criticized Christianity's theory that God created the universe. The skeptic asks, who created God? The theist typically replies that this is a meaningless question because it places limits on the Almighty. We cannot hope to fully comprehend God. From a physical perspective, God is assumed to be outside of time, so to speak. He is eternal. God had no beginning, no mother. Time began with creation. The day God created the universe, he also created time. It turns out that those mathematicians who claim to be atheists have worked themselves to the same solution. Relativists propose that the universe began in a self-induced explosion they call Big Bang. A bubble much smaller than a fraction of an atom forms. This is the universe. It is unimaginably small and unimaginably hot. When asked who or what triggered Big Bang, the mathematician replies exactly like the theist. It is a meaningless question. Time began with the Big Bang, when space and time came into existence. The question a rational person asks is, how does length, width, and height surreptitiously appear in zero time? Let's illustrate this to understand the problem. Assume we wanted to make a movie of this breathtaking event. Each frame represents one location in the universal movie. Think of this as a unit of time. There is absolutely nothing in frame one. Suddenly, length, width, and height pop out of nowhere in frame two. It is as if change occurs within one of your photographs. But let's concede self-creation. What entity gives shape to Big Bang? What is this black stuff that encapsulates space-time? You cannot answer space because space-time already includes space. Relativists dismiss this as an unfair question. Some argue that scientists have no way of verifying experimentally what could contour space-time, and dismiss this as a philosophical question. Well, this is clearly a self-serving reply. The background is an integral part of the theory that the mathematician just presented. The background is a conceptual issue that goes to the root of that theory. Without that background, there is no theory. What is unscientific is for the proponent to delegate questions pertinent to his theory to the people on the other side of campus. Others claim that the universe is infinitely big, so it can't be expanding into anything. Again, this reply misses the mark. What was the universe expanding into when it had 10 centimeters in diameter and fit within your hand? In what medium was Big Bang born? Yet other mathematicians argue that it is impossible to imagine a 4D space-time. They claim that this is not a physical but a mathematical theory. If you want to visualize the universe in which we live, you will just have to study math. It turns out that Big Bang Theory even fails at the mathematical level. Here's what one expert has to say about the equations. Einstein's field equations couple the gravitational field to its sources. And the gravitational field is described by uh, the curvature of space-time, and that's embodied in a, in a mathematical entity called the Einstein tensor. The matter that causes this gravitational field is described by the energy-momentum tensor. So that's on the right side of Einstein's equation, and on the left side we have Einstein's tensor. Now, in the case of a black hole, the relative is set the energy momentum tensor to zero and so Einstein's tensor reduces to Ricky's tensor and that becomes zero and they say that this describes a gravitational field outside a body such as a black hole now what causes the gravitational field outside the black hole well the mass of the black hole so the black hole is the source of the field on the one hand the source is uh, present but on the other hand the source is not present it's a contradiction this is amplified by another fact, is that in the case of uh, the so-called Schwarzschild space-time for a black hole, the energy momentum tensor is zero, but the relativists maintain that there is a source present. That's the source that causes the gravitational field outside their body. In the very same uh, situation, they have a space-time called Ducida space-time, 
which is a cosmological solution, and the energy momentum tensor is there. It's called Ducidus empty world because there are no sources. So on the one hand we have the energy momentum tensor is zero and it's associated with a source, but on the other hand the energy momentum tensor is zero and it has an association with no sources, an empty world. Now, this is a contradiction and so it doesn't hold. Now this is very important because it has bearing on the Big Bang cosmology. Since uh, starts space-time does not contain any matter and really doesn't have any sources, it's a space-time that contains no matter at all. And so it's not a generalization of special relativity, it is only a generalization of the geometry of Mankowski space-time. And so it can't serve as a basis for Einstein's gravitational field, despite what the relativists claim. Now, there's an upshot from this which is very important because since the energy momentum tensor can't be zero to describe a gravitational field in accordance with Einstein's theory since the gravitational field is coupled to its sources by his equations his equations reduce to an identity with zero this means that the total energy of his gravitational field is always zero consequently it's impossible to uh, localize gravitational energy so that means there are no Einstein gravitational waves, the energy momentum tensor and Einstein's tensor must vanish identically. And this also means that Einstein's field equations violate the usual conservation of energy and momentum. And that puts them in direct conflict with the experimental evidence on a deeper level. So on that basis, the Einstein field equations must be invalid. Now since the Big Bang is allegedly derived from Einstein's field equations, the Big Bang cosmology is fallacious because the Einstein field equations are fallacious. I consider it quite possible that physics cannot be based on the field concept, that is, on continuous structures. In that case, nothing remains of my entire castle in the air, gravitation theory included and of the rest of modern physics. Mathematical physics? That's math. This is physics. The bottom line is that the mathematical theory that matter self-assembled from the void fails both conceptually and mathematically. In physics, we resolve whether matter could have self-assembled or been put there by God very easily. We begin by defining the word object as that which has shape, and the word space as that which doesn't have shape. Now we can use these strategic words consistently and decide whether what traditional religion and mathematical physics propose is at all possible. We cannot conceptualize, let alone explain, how matter can arise from the vacuum. Likewise, we cannot conceptualize how matter can lose its shape and become nothing. There is no experiment we can perform in a lab to show how space suddenly acquires the dimensions of length, width, and height, or how an object may lose them. Matter can neither be created nor destroyed. The universe is the only conceivable perpetual machine. Matter has literally nothing to rub against and no border to cross.